Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here. You know, with geographic information systems, spatial technology, we can look at changes over space and time. And one of the most useful image data sets to analyze the Earth with space and time changes is the Sentinel-2 imagery. Now, Sentinel-2 is a part of Copernicus, the world's largest single Earth observation program directed by the European Commission in partnership with the European Space Agency. Sentinel-2 is actually two satellites, which are polar orbiting and placed in the same orbit, phased at 180 degrees to each other. Sentinel-2 carries a wide swath, high resolution, multi-spectral imager that covers a wide area of the Earth with each pass of the satellite at about 290 kilometers up with 13 spectral bands in the electromagnetic spectrum for a unique perspective on land and vegetation. Now, it, re it revisits each point above the Earth's surface frequently, 10 days at the equator with one satellite and five days with two satellites under cloud-free conditions, which results in about a two or three days at mid-latitudes. Now, the combination of this high spatial resolution, 10, 20, and 60 meters, new spectral capabilities, a swath width of 290 kilometers and frequent revisit times provides unprecedented views, new views of the Earth. So let's dig into the Sentinel-2 data. We can look at lots of different things from forest monitoring to pollution in lakes and coastal waters, assessing floods, volcanic eruptions, which is what we'll do today, and landslides for disaster mapping and to help humanitarian relief efforts. Lots of different things. Leaf area chlorophyll, water content, indexes, all sorts of things. So the really exciting thing for you and I as educators is that through the ESRI ArcGIS Online Spatial Technology Platform, the Sentinel-2 data is available. Yes, it's at our fingertips using an image service published through the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World, hosted on the Amazon Web Services infrastructure and is accessible through ArcGIS Online. The service includes all Sentinel-2 imagery going back 14 months, enabling change to be easily reviewed and is updated every five to seven days. So let's use ArcGIS Online to analyze one change occurring right now on the Earth's surface using the Sentinel-2 data in one of the world's most dynamic landscapes, Kilauea, Hawaii. Now, as we go through this exercise, as in other exercises, I want you to think about other things you can do with this. Maybe looking at natural hazards is not your area of interest or what you're teaching, but think about using the same techniques and these same procedures to look at other things that you're interested in. Changes in land use, urbanization, construction of reservoirs, etc. So first we need to access ArcGIS online, ArcGIS.com, and then select Map. Once you select map, you will see an interactive dynamic web map. Scroll all the way to the east or west and notice that it, it is a seamless map. It does not stop at the international dateline or the prime meridian, right? It's a seamless map of the world, as you can see here. In the search box in the upper right, enter Kilauea. Do not select the first results that a result that appears, which is on a different island in the Hawaiian island chain, but rather select the choice that indicates Kilauea Settlement Lots, Hawaii, USA. Or you could just enter Kilauea Settlement Lots and you'll get right to it. In the pop-up box that appears on this location, on the east side of the big island of Hawaii, select Add to Map Notes so that you will have a place marker there as shown here. Notice that you now have a Map Notes layer to the left of your map which you can add to later with additional points of interest or lines, shapes, text, or other graphic elements. Your map now has two layers, the map notes and the base map, which defaults to topographic. You can use the base map tool to the upper left of the map to change the base map to imagery with labels, for example, as I'm showing here. Now, observe the historical lava flows from the fissure to the coast. What direction do they flow? How long are they? You can use the measure tool to find out. Can you visualize on the satellite image where one of the major fissures running east-northeast to west-southwest is located? For a different perspective, change the base map to OpenStreetMap. Note that OpenStreetMap, which is a citizen science generated, more about the power of citizen science or crowdsourcing in, in other videos, map layer, the lava flows are labeled. How do the lava flow areas from the OpenStreetMap base map correspond to the satellite imagery that you examined a moment ago? 
Enter the following latitude longitude in the search box. 19.469014 comma minus 154.896093. So 19.469014 minus 154.896093. The minus because it's western hemisphere, the positive latitude because it's northern hemisphere. In the resulting pop-up box, add this to map notes as you did earlier. Zoom out to discover that your place marker is located on this major fissure. Zoom out further to find the first map note you added on the Kilauea settlement lots. At this point, you've made some modifications to your map. You've added two map notes and you've changed the base map a few times. If you do not save your map, you'll have to once again spend a few minutes reconstructing it, as you have just done. No big deal, but let's say you want to begin your class on Monday with this map just as it appears right now. To access your map the way it appears right now, you'll need to save it. This is the perfect time to introduce the idea of saving and sharing your map. Now just like in other cloud-based tools that you might use, such as Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, and so on, to save content in those tools requires you to have an account and log into that account. ArcGIS Online acts in the same way. How can you get a login to ArcGIS Online? Well, if you're at a university or a technical college, most universities and technical colleges already have an ESRI site license. You could tap into that college or university's ESRI site license, become a, a named user in their ArcGIS Online subscription. You can visit your local resource library to find out more. Number two, if you're at a home school, private school, or public, primary, or secondary school, in Australia, the USA, and in many other countries around the world, you can obtain an ArcGIS Online organizational subscription. The ESRI International Distributors, such as ESRI Australia and the ESRI Australia Schools Program, for example, can guide you. Just fill out the online form to organize your own free schools account. You can create a developer's account or a 21-day trial as well. So lots of different ways to actually get an account. But once you've got an account, Using one of the above types of accounts, sign into your ArcGIS Online account via the Sign In button to the upper right of the map. Once you sign in, you will receive a notice indicating that you have made some changes to the map that you've been working on and whether you wish to save. Here, select Yes, I want to save the map as follows. Next, enter some metadata, data about your map that appears in this box so that you can in the future be able to find your map and others will be able to find and use your map as well. Give it an appropriate title such as Sentinel-2 imagery and your initials or school name. Provide a few tags such as Sentinel-2 imagery, Kilauea, and perhaps some other code or string of text so that you'll be able to find your map later on. And along with a description. Note that your map will go into a root folder of your ArcGIS Online account. You can move it later and we'll discuss that in a future uh, component here. But when done, say Save your map. There are other advantages to logging into ArcGIS Online. Besides the ability to save your map, logging in allows you to access a large body of map content called the Living Atlas of the World, which you will use next. You'll use a little piece of it, but there's lots more there. Logging in also allows you to perform some spatial analysis on your data, such as map overlay, geocoding, uploading your own data, spatial statistics, and other functions that you might, you might want to explore later. You can also share your map, as we'll talk about later in this video. Now that you're logged in, notice that you have some additional tools, as highlighted here. You've got an Add button, you've got an Analysis button, you've got a Save button, and you've got a Share button. So for starters, let's add the Sentinel-2 imagery that I've been raving about. So select Add, Browse Living Atlas Layers, enter Sentinel-2 as shown here. Click in the Sentinel-2 Views by ESRI to expand the layer. On the panel that appears, read the metadata and note the author, in this case ESRI. We will return to the importance of the map author uh, later on in this video. Then go ahead and select, select Add to Map. On the left panel, use the back arrow to see the contents listed as shown here. Save your map again. Saving is very important. There is no autosave in most online spatial technology tools, though autosave does exist with desktop spatial technologies such as ArcGIS Pro. Hence, when using web-based spatial technology, save often. Another key to success, do not use the back arrows in your web browser when you are in an active web mapping browser tab. You could lose all the work that you've done since the last time that you've saved. 
The imagery may look cloudy at Kilauea at the time the image was taken. When was it taken? Click on the imagery to find out. Let's look and see when the image was taken at the current time that I'm looking at it right now. With spatial technology, you have the power to change how your image is rendered or displayed. Select the ellipses, or the three dots, to the right of your Sentinel-2 views layer. Next, select Image Display, Geology with DRA, and take the defaults and apply. This DRA is Dynamic Range Adjustment, with the three colors rendering light on your computer, red, green, blue, representing the short wave infrared 2, short wave infrared 1, and blue bands 12, 11, and 2 in the electromagnetic spectrum. So see, you've got a nice tie to, to discussing science in here, the electromagnetic spectrum and energy. This has the effect of highlighting geologic features, which is our goal here in our analysis of the eruption. Furthermore, with spatial technology, you have the power to query or filter your map data. Let's do that here. Now, just a note here, folks. Oftentimes, you have too much information in spatial technology. So what you want to do is filter. I only want to look at certain cities. I only want to look at certain natural hazards. I only want to look at certain rivers, etc. And so that's what filtering lets you do. Here, we're going to filter the data on a certain date, 23 May 2018, which was one of the most active dates on recent record at Kilauea. So when done, apply filter. So we're going to go with acquisition date, is on 5-23-2018 and we're going to apply filter. The image will appear similar to this below right here in this image. Wow, this is fascinating. If, if this doesn't get people's attention, students, faculty, and otherwise, I, I, I truly don't know what will. I mean, this is, this is to me, it's like, look at this, it's incredible that we've got this at our fingertips in a web browser with spatial technology filtered on that date. Save your map again. Now, this image through this tool should represent and demonstrate the power of spatial technology or at the very least as I mentioned make your students stand up and say this is incredible with these tools and with this data you can measure the length of the new lava on that day in yellow you can also adjust via the ellipses tool again the transparency of the open street map base so that you can determine which homes were affected and which fissure was active on this date Using the filter tool, you can change the date and examine how the lava flow changed on subsequent days and weeks. With the Add tool, you can add additional data to the map, such as recent earthquakes in this area, population density, and more. If you had any trouble creating your map, you can examine this map, as I indicate here, with the above procedures conducted on it. Because this map was created with the Sentinel-2 imagery from the Living Atlas, you'll need to be logged in to actually see it. Now remember, folks, this yellow stripe right, is in the shortwave infrared. It, it doesn't actually look yellow on the ground. It's, it's sensing heat here. And so it's rendering it so that you can see it as a bright yellow color. But we'll look at some imagery in a bit in the visible part of the spectrum where you're actually going to see that it's black, not yellow. Let's do one more powerful thing with this map. Save your map again and then select Share to access the following dialog box. So see this box right here? Your map can be shared with no one, with no boxes checked, and only you will be able to look at it or view it. On the other end of the spectrum, your map can be shared with everyone in the world. Between those two extremes, you've got some good choices here. You've got many choices. Your map can be shared with your organization. Note that in the course's author's case, my case, the organization name is Esri Education Community. Your organization will be your own developer account organization name or the name of your school, university, or agency. If the organization box is checked, then everyone in your organization will be able to view that map. Or your map could be shared with a subset of your organization. Think about maybe all of your GIS 101 students or the students in your second year biology or geography course or your social studies education faculty colleagues working with on a watershed project. You can create groups and share your map with just the people in that group. Groups may be open groups across different organizations or only visible within a single organization. One last note, just because your map is viewable to others does not mean they will necessarily be able to find it. The metadata tags that you will include will help, but you still might need to include the link in your, of your map in an email, a blog post, a newsletter, a tweet, an article, or, or some other method so that others will be able to find it. Here, share your map with just your own organization if you wish. One last feature that we will return to in a bit, note that you can create a web app from your map. 
Now we've been working with several web apps here already um, in in this in this course, the Change Matters Viewer, the Message in a Bottle, Ocean Currents, for example, and we'll work with additional web maps and future components such as story maps. Web apps can be thought of as the, the final product that you or your students could create summarizing a research project or an instructional lesson. The share tool that you are now examining is one way that you can create your own web, web apps in the future. Now let's look at one more thing here, and this is really exciting as well. We're going to look at UAV imagery in a bit. One note about that though, it's a rapidly evolving component of remote sensing imagery inside of spatial technology. Unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, sometimes called UASs, unmanned aerial systems, or drones even. UAVs have led to amazing tools and data with which to analyze the world. One advantage of UAV data is that educators, students, transportation planners, firefighters, and others can operate UAVs themselves to collect imagery. Another advantage is that the UAV data generates imagery with a very fine spatial accuracy, sometimes just a few centimeters per pixel because they fly so low compared to aircraft or satellites, right? So that's good. They allow for very detailed views of the landscape, in part because of the sophisticated sensors and also because they're much lower to the Earth's surface. Another advantage is that these sensors can sense in wavelengths other than the visible part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Thermal UAV imagery can be useful, for example, to firefighters and to people assessing the efficiency of different buildings through examining how much heat they are losing. So a UAV business partner of ESRI called Hangar operates an innovative service where they fly areas that people request them to fly. Hangar recently flew across Kilauea, Hawaii and compiled a set of amazing, wonderful 360 degree immersive UAV images, images into a single story map. The Hangar Kilauea story map makes for an incredibly engaging tool for use in instruction about human environment interaction, impact of natural hazards, plate tectonics, current events, and much more. Examine this story map, scrolling through it as a supplement to your earlier investigation of Kilauea that uses the Sentinel-2 imagery. Check this out. Oh, this is just incredible uh, to me to be able to look at this story map and look at this and note that it's, it's, it's black in the visible part of the spectrum and examining which houses on your ArcGIS Online map are shown on the UAV story map. Can you determine which ones they are? And how can you explain the fact that the lava is shown is shown in the Sentinel-2 imagery as bright yellow, but in the UAV visible images it appears black? How could you use the Sentinel-2 imagery together with the UAV imagery to teach about the impacts of lava and volcanism? What about all that smoke you see in the distance? How long do these people have to get out of their uh, out of their house? Uh, can you see evidence, as you see right here, in other places of people actually actively packing up their vehicles and getting out of there? I mean, this is real. This is real life here, folks, and we're looking at imagery and these tools and these maps not just as an academic exercise, but actually they're hel helping people make wise decisions about, in this case, whether to evacuate or not evacuate, and they're also helping rescue workers. So. These tools, these technologies, they're at your fingertips, they're easy to access, and they can be used in a, a large variety of settings. In an earth science course, you could use this in a other courses as well to look at um, changes over space and time. Thanks.